When that new sound was released, it's like the Lord, when she halal, Kim Walker, for example, halal, it was a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. But in that song, Tehillah, you know, yeah. happened and God met her. And she just, from that new sound out of her, released it. And now all over the place, it's a part of worship all over the place. Not every, not every body, not every group does it, but it's just, it's out there. Yeah. So think about how much more we go from glory to glory to glory. God says he hides things. Yeah. And then he, it's the glory of him to hide it and the glory of kings to seek it out. Welcome, guys, to the 46th episode of the Open Waters podcast. Yeah, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing good, Josiah. How are you? I'm doing good, too. <laughs> I'm just living life. I just had uh, somebody move in with me, so it's kind of interesting. It's like, uh, you know. Getting going... used to not being solitary. I enjoy my solitary. Solid, sol solitary, solitude. Solidarity, solitude. I enjoyed it, but now <laughs> I've got somebody there, and it's like, now I have to talk to somebody. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway. I'm loving today. Good. We're sitting out with blue sky and sunshine. You got some stuff right here on your lip. Oh, thanks. There you go, bro. I just had some avocado toast. Yummy. And I'm drinking there a cayenne go, pepper decaf latte. Yeah, buddy. Truly. Anyway, All right, guys. Josiah. <clears throat> What's our topic today? Today is the last but fourth episode of the seven Hebrew words of praise. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys have been liking it. It's been pretty fun to do them. Yeah. It's been a good time. It's been insightful it's as really... we're intentional about our worship and praise. Yeah, knowing what we're doing. Um, I wanted to kind of preface this. Uh, well, actually, I'll start off with kind of just going through what, like what the big emphasis and why we're doing this. And it's because we, it's important to know why we do what we do. Um, yeah. As we're not, like we've said this, I believe, every episode, but I like to start off just like letting people know that it's important for us to know what we're doing because it's like we're not wandering aimlessly or mindlessly, you know, just following what our parents and our predecessors did. We are knowing why, we're knowing why they did what they did um, for ourselves because it gives us a whole another depth of uh, why we're doing it. Yeah. And also, I almost, I, I believe it gives us another, pretty much another level of power and, uh, just knowing why we do what we do. Yeah, it's good. And so, I so if you guys are enjoying it, please let us know in the comments. We'd be happy to answer any questions you guys have or just talk with you guys. So. Yeah, seriously, our heart is honestly to have a conversation between Josiah and I that is relatable and that Truly. also is, you know, causing not only us to grow as we talk about these things and learn. Yeah. with our audience, but to have our audience truly grow. And we also want to cover topics that are important to you. So we really do encourage you to email us at openwaterworship at gmail.com or comments. give us some comments on YouTube or yeah. uh, at Instagram at Open Waters Worship. We, we would love to engage in conversation with you because part of our, our founding... Um, Part of our mission statement yeah. is just to build up fellowship with the church. Yeah, we're, we're here to build up intimacy with God and to pretty much grow, like growing into me with God. Intimacy, wow, that was a struggle, that's great. That was struggle for that solitude, you. <sighs> yeah, I don't usually speak to people. <laughs> anyway, we build up intimacy with God, we build up the yeah. morale in the body of Christ, because sometimes it feels lonely. Yeah. And then to build up fellowship, because we're not doing this alone, and it's important to know that we can lean on others. So, yeah. So, I today, wanted to kick things off. Oh, you wanted to start it? I, yes. had, I had one thought, though, really quick. Can we I say know. it? Okay, okay, okay. I'll let you go. I want to just start with this. Okay, okay. This psalm of praise from Psalm 150. Okay, do it. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to the abundance of His greatness. Praise Him with trumpet sound, Manuel. Praise Him with a harp and lyre. Praise Him with tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flute. Praise Him with resounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Let everything that has breath and every breath of life praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I read this because this is one of the ones that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Kicked it, it off. Explain it. So should we start with the last one first? The last one first. What do you mean? I just read that one that goes with the okay, last so one. So you read, there's the two words we're doing today are halal yes. and tahila. Yes. The one she just read is halal. Yes. Which is like, what it. is that? What is it? Yeah, because you're the one who is yeah. the one that tells us what it is. All right. So the halal is to acknowledge God's glory and to praise God. So it's really, you can say that you acknowledge someone. Like when someone walks into a room, you can look at them and acknowledge them. That's acknowledgement. 
Mm, but that's good. until you look up and see that they're truly there, you're not acknowledging them, right? Ooh, yeah. And so when you're acknowledging God's praise with a halal mm-hmm. praise, you're truly from to your the core of your being acknowledging that He's His glory. That's really good. And praising Him for it. It's also to uh, pretty much make a clear and brilliant tone or sound. So when you hear people um, sing a note for a long time or they hit a chord and they hold that chord, it's a halal praise because we're just sitting there and we're Ooh. acknowledging. And then that's super cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So now when we hit, well, now I know when we're out in church and we're hitting an A sus chord and we're staying yeah. there and I'm getting annoyed, we're just halaling <laughs> because I like movement. And so I need to realize that we're, we're doing something in the spirit and we're praising. Hello. And so, <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yes, exactly. And then it's also to celebrate God's goodness. And one thing that I wanted to point out is it's in it also says the book by Vivian Hibbert, which is where we're getting a lot of our content from for this series, is it's in a, it talks about how it's an essential expression of public worship in the Old Testament. How there's pretty few places in public where they weren't halali the Lord, <laughs> and so. And I think didn't it doesn't it say in there too that halal is just it's the number one most used word in the Bible for yeah. praise. It's the most. This is the most commonly translated yes. word for praise used approximately 121 times in the Old Testament according to theological workbook word book of the Old Testament. Halal is considered an essential uh an essential p- to public worship. It comes from the imperative hallelujah which is it's a combination of the word halal which is to praise the Lord, acknowledge his glory and jah which is a shortened version shortened word for uh, Yahweh yeah. and so Lord. it says it's a pretty much like straight up just plainly it's just praise the Lord crazy so, <laughs> so yeah. simple but so complex um, what I really I wanted to read a couple of <clears throat> the verses that have it now mm-hmm. I that first scripture verse I read if you notice in there it says let everything that hath breath has breath praise the Lord praise a the lot Lord. of the scripture verses that have halal in it are from we get a lot of our modern day and mm-hmm. Um, traditional type songs. For instance, um, so the one I just read, let everything that has breath. Um, Psalm 34, one, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 43, he has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to the Lord God. Um, praise is awaiting you, O God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. That's mm-hmm. a that's an oldie, but mm-hmm. goodie. Um, sing to the Lord a new song. <clears throat> I'm just going through some of them. These are all through Psalms and Isaiah. We just had a car drive by. I don't know if people heard that, but they probably um, did. So, or, sorry, Isaiah 61, 3, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Um, there's so many of these uh, words. Another one was, um, uh, let me see which one it is. Anyway, there's just so many things. Oh, yeah, you are enthroned in the praises of Israel. I think of being mm-hmm. enthroned upon the praises of a thousand generations. That song. Mm-hmm. I mean, so many of our modern day songs. Yeah come directly from the the verses in the Bible that have halal in them, which I think is so cool. Yeah. You got any other comments? No, not really. I was going to go off on a tangent, kind of. Go on a tangent. I, I think I want to know, I want to see if I should do it before or after. So I'll probably do after. So, okay. But I think it's cool because halal comes up a lot. And the next word has to do with a combination of everything. Yeah. Um, but I'm not gonna move on quite yet because this halal praise is one of the ones that one of the the little, you know, excerpts or like the the connection points to the next word comes from. And it's just they were giving up a halal praise as a sacrifice. Yeah. And it's important for us to like realize that it's these different words for praise, we can give them up as offerings as well. And yeah. so it's not just like we're worshiping God, we're praising God, but we can also give them up as an offering that costs yeah. us something. So anyway. Um yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. We're, we'll probably move. We'll spend quite a bit of time on this next one, I think. Okay. Yeah. But the next word is tequila. And this is, like I said just a second ago. Did you say tequila? Did, no, I said tequila. Oh. oh <laughs> no, we don't drink here. At least not right now. <laughs> anyway, guys. Um, it is tequila. And it, it means to sing or celebrate with a song to laud or to sing halal's high praise and so it's essentially just like pretty much praising the lord again but it's a combination of everything yeah it's 
one of the one of the things from the book says it's not the most common but or the loudest but it is always happens when something special is happening and so before we move on do you have any comments no i really i just i think encompassed and i just always go back to i think second chronicles 20 just talks about when they were lifting up their halal in public which also has to do it's part of the word mm -hmm. to to Tehila. Tehila. <laughs> um, the Lord set ambushes against yeah. their enemies. And when they also, were halal in the Lord. Yes, and just a lot of it had to do with just worshiping the Lord from the deliverance from enemies. And so I just think we cannot deny the yeah. association of some of halal and tehila and, and really all of the words that have to do it's with... It's funny that you said it happens when something's happening. Because yeah. that's what it said, but also it's the one of the pretty much what makes it different from all the rest of them is that it happens when the Lord is manifesting himself amongst Ooh. the praise. Ooh. And so when he shows up. That's my favorite time. And so it, it's like taking, it's like when you're, you're halaling the Lord, it's like... You're, you're praising the Lord, but then he comes in and he makes it something different. And the, he makes it something the tehila, new. it's like he comes in and inhabits the praises exactly. of his people. Yeah. So Ooh. it's him inhabiting the praise. That's what, we're, that's what our goal is, to meet with him and to just really um, experience his manifest presence, to be in his presence. You just, you, you are in his presence for a yeah. second and you're totally, completely changed and it's everything, it's the fulfillment of everything we long for. Yeah. It may, we're whole, completely whole. Yeah. One of the things it talks about is how uh, in Isaiah 42.10, it talks about sing to the Lord a new song and his let us praise uh, reach from the ends of the earth. And it it pretty much is saying, uh, well, at least the excerpt she, she Vivian wrote is that this this references the Tehila, the Tehila praise uh, descending on the praises of the world, giving it and creating a new sound or a song. Ooh, oh, my so goodness. It's it's like it's to take God when we he and pretty much like you said yeah it infiltrates our worship and our praise it's he's creating something new that we could never do ourselves oh, i love that you know i was thinking today <clears throat> on the way here <clears throat> a couple of things that i think have to do with that new sound mm -hmm. i mean i feel like just this last sunday when we were worshiping before we worshiped in preparation we were just uh, the lord was just speaking to me about releasing this new sound and another song like actually we have a worship at U Hop tomorrow night um, and where I just was like telling the leader please let's put this song in because I want to sing the song and it's Heaven's Horizons by Summit Sounds and it's, I think this is something that's so important to me is to lift up my worship to the Lord my halal um, to find out what's on Heaven's Horizon what I want to know what God is thinking and I want that and, and that's when then you have the Tehillah te where his presence is there and you've you've partnered with heaven and heaven invades earth and, and he's with you and you're partnering with him and you're now releasing the sound from heaven and from him and from his heart in partnership. And I just, I love that. And I was also thinking about how um, different groupings of people, like in particular, I was thinking as I was listening to the song, Heaven's Horizons on the way here, I was thinking of how much it's just become a part of all of our worship, how worship totally shifted when <clears throat> Kim Walker and some other people released the sound of the, the um, ad-libbing worship, the, 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 you know, just like this new sound of worship in, in worship, like how they would go off script. It used to be, when I grew up in church, and, and back in the day, it was just, you sing the song through and that's it. But what, and it may have been done in a lot of places, but it didn't become, that new sound wasn't released in mainstream worship groupings yeah. um, to where we even have it on the radio now sometimes, which there's a whole nother debate about that. But it, when that new sound was released, it's like the Lord, when she halal, Kim Walker, for example, halal, it was a beautiful song, mm -hmm. but in that song, Tehillah, you know, yeah. happened and God met her and she just from that new sound out of her released it and now all over the place. It's a part of worship all over the place. Not every not everybody, not every group does it, but it's just it's out there. Yeah. So think about how much more we go from glory to glory to glory. God says he hides things. Yeah. And then 
he, it's the glory of him to hide it and the glory of kings to seek it out. And there's revelation, like he's the same, but his word is live and active and yeah. it's, it's living and breathing. And so there's new sounds. Think of the new sounds that there are. And, and I mean, even heaven talks about there will be colors. There'll, there will be things that we've never experienced mm -hmm. before. And we get the opportunity as dual citizens of earth and heaven to mm -hmm. go into heaven, to raise that praise, have him yeah. partner with him and have him meet us and release that new sound on earth. Yeah. That could change how people worship mm -hmm. totally. That's incredible. Yeah, that's cool. And it's this new, it's like revelation. It's new to us, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So anyway, I just, it, it blows your mind it's actually cool. when you think about it. 100%. Yeah. So it's a Gila. It's just, it's, mm -hmm. it links very closely to the prophetic, like you're saying. Yeah. And so that's where it comes in, where it's not just you no more. It's you and the Holy Spirit, God infiltrating the praise. Yeah. And it talks also about um, how pretty much when you allow God to come infiltrate, he, you now are, instead of halaling or yeah. barocking or any of that, mm -hmm. you're now to healing. It takes it to another level to where it's something that even the best musicians, the best worshipers, mm -hmm. the best uh, coordinated yeah. people can ever do. It takes you beyond your natural talent. Yes. It takes you to the supernatural. That's why when you play some music and you're really in the flow of the Holy Spirit, yeah. you're like, I don't even know what I played. Right. Like when I'm playing drums, sometimes it's just like, I could never yeah. have done that myself. Yeah. I, I know you're going to go on a tangent. Are you, done, are you done with that line of thought? Yeah. I really want to speak to the creatives out there too, because I think, I think, um, I think that creatives are in a smaller group. And I, and I think the thing about creatives, we know even like with artwork, so it, it's just kind of a, a comical but true statement that like art artists, painters, don't become famous until after they die, right? Most time. Because their stuff is what they release, that new thing that they release, it feels different. It feels awkward mm -hmm. at first, but then you realize how Earth, earth shattering, groundbreaking it is. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna encourage all the creatives out there mm -hmm. that are ahead of where we're at. Like, I don't think I'm a creative, we're all creative because we're made in God's image, mm -hmm. but I don't think I'm a creative per se. Like if you're Enneagram people, you're fours, you know, different, and I don't know, put people in a box, but just the creatives that are ahead of where we're at and that, and that are beyond where we're at. I think of like Kim Clement, he was beyond where we are at. You know, he always, he's had the song, you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now. And, and I think I just want to encourage the creatives to just don't be afraid to release mm -hmm. when you raise your halal and yeah. when you experience that tequila, don't be afraid to release what's inside of you, even if it's different, yeah. you know? Be like David, be like Mary. Mm -hmm. Don't care about what people think because the world, the body of Christ, the lost, everybody, we all need what you carry. And just because people may not immediately accept it, and even though you may feel it's yep. rejected at first, release it because God will do something so supernatural and it can change the whole face yeah. and it can bring incredible breakthrough. 100%. Agreed. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I only what had was one, your little sidebar? I had one little thought, but okay. it came to me like when we were when I was writing down notes for today's episode, and mm -hmm. it was um, taking off the 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 factual cap, and now I'm going to put on a theory cap because it's okay. like there you go. I'm not 100 percent sure how biblical like this analogy. is, but um, when we're talking about the seven verse uh, words of praise, all these have to do with some sort of outward type of praise, outward type of expression at least. So you're you're not just like you're not sitting there and you're internalizing your outwardly praise the Lord. And so I'm not sure how true it is, but I believe, well, I'm starting to believe that praise is something that is not at all inward, but it's fully outward praise. Yeah. Like it's fully public. Not like you're having to do it in front of people, but it's fully something that people could see. Yeah. And so I, it, I'm guessing that's factual and I was told that in somewhat some time, but I'm not 100% sure if that's true or not. Um, I wrote it down. Some yeah. words of praise all deal with outward signs of praise. Worship yeah. often happens internally, but praise always happens out loud. Mm -hmm. And so I just want you guys to think about that. Maybe encourage you guys to instead of, mm -hmm. you know, being the quiet one at your church, being the, the wild, uh, yeah. undignified <laughs> one. Because it's a hard place to be. I mean, I myself am an introvert. So being undignified and being, I mean, what would seem like the center of attention. Yeah. 
is kind of a weird place for me to be because I would never want to be the center of right. attention. And I think what dignified, I'm doing air quotes with my yeah, fingers, what undignified, undignified looks for Josiah and what, or what feels like yeah. for Josiah and what undignified feels like for me is probably a whole nother level, oh, yeah. right? We're on two different plane, you know, two different planes, so to speak. So for somebody, it might be raising your hands and just right. fully, um, you dying or yeah. toe dying the Lord, yeah. giving him praise and thanks. Um, but then for somebody else, it might be a barocking and kneeling before the Lord yeah. in praise yep. and just confessing. It's just, so it, it's going to look different for everybody. Yep. Um, so I just, just, yeah. If you have any questions about that, let me know. Cause I would like to know your thoughts. Yeah. You know, <laughs> one other thing I, I just want to point out about, I think it was in particular with halal is halal seemed to also be associated with authority. Like mm -hmm. in a lot of the verses that I read, it had to do with as David commanded or, and they were Levites. Mm -hmm. And so I just think there is a piece of this that probably we could die, that people could dive into deeper about the relation of our praise being tied to um, authority, like mm -hmm. coming from authority and being released by authority and, and uh, probably also releasing authority. But that's, yeah, I just thought yeah. that, was a, that was another little observation I yeah. had about it all. Just kind of wrapping everything up, I just wanted to go through the seven words really quickly yeah. to kind of give like everybody who may have missed a couple episodes, yeah, they can get a summary of what it is, but they could also go listen to it. I mean, go listen to it. But uh, <laughs> all right, so number one, we had Barack, which is just essentially Barack. two. I don't know. But... What? I yeah, mean, that's exactly yeah. it. You had it right. Uh, to, I had to, to just say because I didn't want to be wrong. Bow. To now <laughs> kneel or blessed. On bended knee yes. to remember joyfully that he's yes. the source of all our blessings. I got that one right. Oh, no. To yada, to confess with outstretched hands or to yes. revere the Lord. Yada. It's more than that, but to publicly declare the word God's mm -hmm. works and attributes rather than a passive praise. Mm -hmm. um, number three is toda, which toda. is Thanksgiving. Oh, yes. Yes, I love that. Oh, and I know... I just read something. It's like pushing a button. It's like when you enter his great, I and mean, there's no formula, but it's like yeah. when you thank God in your praise, it's like pushing a button into his presence. Boom. Yeah. And it, well, when you thank somebody, it's it's acknowledging yeah. that they're great, right? Yeah. And you're thanking them for their greatness and yeah. what they mean. And, and it's anyway, so Toda is a noun and it was implied in pretty much an outward display of faith through praise. Zamar was the fourth one. And that it is literally to touch the strings and to make melody. Mm, so you playing like an that. instrument, so guitar, you're plucking, your uh, guitar, mm -hmm. you're hitting notes. David, it, yeah. it, it, it is like warfare and it deliverance. Yeah. It is a musical term. It's so. healing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then today we had, I mean, no, still Shabak, which is the to commend or laud, is to shout. Shout. It is literally to, to yell. It makes um, me want to shout. Give and glory and triumph and praise. Yes. So that's a loud one. That's that's what our friend Lester does. He's awesome. Yeah. And it breaks Warrior. through the atmosphere. It does. Um, and then today we had halal and tehila, which you guys just heard about halal yeah. being to acknowledge God's glory, to praise Him, uh, to make a clear, brilliant tone or sound, to celebrate God's goodness. Yeah. It's the most common word that's been used for praise. Yeah. And so and then there's tehila, which is when God infiltrates your praise, and He shows up. It feels like tequila when, when you giving. don't have all the bad effects. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, guys, um, that's it. That's the seven words of yes. Hebrew words for praise. And I nice hope you guys enjoyed job. it. So, Lord, I just want to thank you for these uh, giving us this resource, God. Yes. Just giving us the seven words, Hebrew words for praise, God. Um, I pray that we would just learn them, uh, try to memorize them, God, and to implement them into our worship, God, every Sunday, every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, God. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, God, just every day of the week when we have time and when we, we make time for you, God, which we should be doing, Jesus. Mm -hmm. God, I pray that you would just forgive us for not knowing what we were doing, God, and just aimlessly doing what our predecessors did, God, but we'll do what you've now let us know how to do, you know, giving us definitions for the things we were doing, God. So, God, I pray that we'd move forward in power and in knowledge, God, and wisdom on how to properly worship you God yeah. to the best of our ability Jesus and I pray that you would continue to improve our worshiping skills because you're worthy of it all yes you are amen amen that's it Boop. take care guys knuckles